Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Richard Chaplin, the founder and chief executive of the Managing Partners Forum, and your proud host for today's ceremony of the Forum's 19th Annual Management Excellence Awards. Best Operational Continuity. And before the winners announce, please welcome Sally Ashworth of the sponsors Harbour Business Review. Let's look at who the finalists are for you this year. So there's Arthur Cox, Braciers, Osborne Clark, Shoesmiths, and Wiley and Bissett. In second place is Braciers. So uh, over to you, Sally, to announce the winner. Thanks, Richard. So the winner of the award for best operational continuity is Shoesmiths. Congratulations. I'd like to welcome Simon Boss, who is the CEO. Hello, afternoon, everyone. Thank you. For Congratulations. Thank you, Sally. Congratulations. Thank you. Very good. Now, uh, we're going to talk a little bit, Simon, about your submission and um, some of the uh, issues that you were challenged. I mean, what your challenge was, as I understood it, was that you wanted to be the leading UK law firm for client experience. Well, you do. Um, but that meant having to change the way that you delivered services with everybody working from home, and it would also impact your clients in a similar way. So talk about the working principles a bit as to exactly how you went about putting those together and then implementing them. Yeah, no, thank you, Richard. Uh, well, I guess like many organizations, a period of really, really rapid change. Um, in, in some ways, nothing new, but just really dialing up the speed of change and things we had to do. So uh, Peter's already talked around some of the sort of the client work we did. So I won't repeat uh, uh, what we did in terms of uh, the external piece, but in terms of um, taking our people with us uh, and, and really focusing on that client experience is, is clearly supporting them really quickly uh, as things changed um, in terms of getting them set up to work from home. Um, like others, we were well progressed in terms of uh, agile working, the tech support, but nonetheless, we still had to be fairly fleet of foot uh, in, in dealing with that. Uh, and then when it became evident that through lockdown, we were going to be into some sort of extended period of disruption, um, thinking around how that sort of long term ongoing agile piece was going to play out and really sending um, uh, some very sort of clear messages um, uh, around uh, uh, what was um what was going to work for people? So our shoesmiths way, um, uh, our shoesmiths working way um, came from that, which is really focused around um, putting the client centricity first, but then then allowing our people to, to to actually make work work for them, as it were. So building that a a agile piece, moving away from any suggestion it's around occupancy, um, but really uh, around output. So people being able to to choose and select how they work, when they work, um, but focusing uh, on the output. Uh, it's not about hours. It's really about really what what you manage to do with your team, with your clients. Um, put it another way, uh, the answer was yes, and then working backwards from that. Um, yeah, uh, what, what what do you want to do? The answer is yes. Then let's see how it fits with with, with everything else and and building sort of the. I say building, but just establishing the trust piece. You know, frankly, if you trust mm -hmm. your people, um, uh, nine hundred ninety nine times out of a thousand, they they will absolutely repay you and repay you handsomely on that trust. So really, just applying those principles and then letting it unfold from there. Yeah, it's like trying to network, uh, thinking the world is full of strangers. It doesn't work, does it? Talk a bit about reciprocal mentoring, which is something that was mentioned. I mean, how, how, what, how has that program worked for you? Yeah, um, uh, just turning mentoring on its head, really. And this sort of builds around, again, some of the other messages we've heard today about the, the rise in ESG to absolutely the top of the agenda and within that diversity and inclusion and, and recognising that for... Our senior leadership, that's our board uh, and others outside of the board, um, to really understand some of the, the pressures, some of the barriers, some of the issues that are out there. We needed to hear much more of that firsthand. So working through, through our networks, um, uh, teaming up one to one um, with uh, others in the business who are in, frankly, um, you know, either different or more junior places than, than us and creating a, an environment where we can have really honest open direct conversations in safe environments so that we we can hear from uh, members of the black community from members of the lgbt plus communities and so on around what's going on what's working for them and more importantly what's not um uh, and bring yeah in, in a safe confidential environment but also bringing bring stuff back from that really helping the business to to move on so turning turning mentoring on its head i'm being mentored not the other way around 